happy Sabbath. Welcome to Kingdom Children Preparing for Eternity. We are here once again to praise God and learn more about Him. I was thinking about how blessed most of us are. We live in places where we can praise God openly. We can attend church services and not be thrown in jail because of what we believe. Boys and girls, do you know there are some children in this world who have to hide to worship God? Yes. I want us to remember to pray for these children and their families. Let us pray that they will be encouraged as they stand for their beliefs. And let us pray that God will continue to take care of them. In fact, let's pray for them right now. Dear Jesus, Please build all the boys and girls and their families who are trying to serve you, even though it might land them in jail always. Help us to always remember them as boys and girls who can praise you freely. Help us to remember to pray for them and to keep them in our prayers. And please send them encouragement so that they will continue to worship with you, no matter how perilous it might get. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do you know that we will learn about our seven mountains since this series began? Hmm. I wonder if you can name the six we've climbed so far. It's okay if you don't remember all. But before you remind me of those mountains, our Kingdom Praise team is ready to lead us in worship. Let's join them. Jesus loved the little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loves the little one like me, me, me. She loves the ones like me, who sat upon his knee. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Little ones like me. Sat upon his knee, did us all the little children me, me, me. Did us all the little ones like you, you, you. Did us all the little ones like you, you, you. Other ones like you, did us love you too. Did us all the little ones like you.
Happy Sabbath and a good morning to all God's kingdom children. It is always a pleasure to join together to learn about God's word. Today, I have a special task to share my faith on what it means to have an attitude check. Do you like going to the doctor? Some children are terrified of going to the doctor. They have the fear that the doctor might use a syringe on them. Are you one of those children? I certainly hope not. Doctors do not do things to hurt children. Instead, they do things to help us, boys and girls, just as we need to go to a doctor for physical checkups, we also need to do some attitude checkups. But who do we go to? Well, I would love to go to Dr. Jesus to have my attitude checked. Why? Well, because he preached a whole sermon on a mountain talking about the right attitude for Christians to have. I figured that if he made the time to do it, then our attitude must be very important to him. What does it mean to have a attitude checked? It means sometimes we do not behave correctly. Sometimes we are grumpy and unkind. Sometimes we are naughty and destructive. Sometimes we are rude and disobedient. These are not characteristics that make God smile. Therefore, we need to take them to Dr. Jesus and ask him to fix us. When we have our, have our regular attitude checks, Jesus tells us why we behave the way we do. Sometimes it is because of the food we eat. Sometimes it can be because we do not understand the, circum the consequences of our actions. Whatever it is, when we take our attitude problems to Jesus, he gives us a diagnosis and a prescription to help us get better and have better attitude. Wouldn't it be great if our teachers always complimented us and say to our parents how well behaved and well disciplined we are? Won't it be great if our parents would say how helpful and cheerful we are? Yes, we would be happier and get punished less because our ways please God. We, the great news is, even though our parents have to pay doctors to give us physical checkups, they don't have to pay Jesus for our attitude checks. We can go to him any day, any time to have our attitude checked. I don't know about you, but I feel special knowing that I have a friend who is a doctor who is willing to help me improve on my behavior. A whole new me at 
no great cost. I love that. This reminds me of Christ's Sermon on the Mount when he listed all the attitudes he was willing to bless. Boys and girls, today is a good day to have your attitude checked so you can make sure that your attitude pleases God. With your kids' faith gem today, I am Viangelo Taylor wishing you an exciting and spirit-filled day today. Thank you so much, my dear Kingdom children. I am so proud of you all. Maybe you are at home and would like to be here sharing your faith or praising God in some other way. I would love for you to join me. Remember, you can always call or WhatsApp Auntie Natalie at 1-866-382-9451 or email asitobago at gmail.com and let us know. Now, back to my question. Can you name all six mountains we have climbed so far? Come on now. Even if you can name some, that's okay. Let's go. Hmm. Mount Ararat, Mount Moriah, Mount Sinai, also known as Mount Horeb, Mount Nebo, Gerizim, and Carmel. Yes, that's all six so far. How many did you get correct? Well, well done everyone. Today, we climb Mount Eremos. Hmm, I know some of the adults are wondering, what mount is that? Well, it is also known as the Mount of the Beatitudes. Yes, it is the very place that became popular for the Sermon on the Mount. Now, the Sermon on the Mount has many parts to it. But today, I want us to focus on the Beatitudes. What is this, you may wonder? Stay tuned and find out what the Beatitudes are about and why Jesus shared this with us. Some scholars say the word Beatitude came from a Latin word, butus. That means happy or fortunate. Others say it came from the Latin word, Beatitudo which means blessedness. I prefer the second Latin word and its meaning, blessedness. Blessed indicates something far more than happy or fortunate. Okay, boys and girls, let us get into these statements that make up what we know as the Beatitudes found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds coming to see him, he went up into a mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil up things about you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets before you in the same way. And this brings us to the end of the Beatitudes. The sermon continued on Mount Eremos. But, as I mentioned earlier, I want us to focus on the Beatitudes. Jesus himself spoke these words. These words Jesus spoke tells us that even in difficult times, we should see his blessing. We are to be content in life and know that Jesus will take care of us, even if it doesn't seem so at first. Let us recap and understand each statement's meaning. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
This encourages us to be content with what we have, for even if we have little, heaven will be ours. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This encourages us to be compassionate and to be understanding. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. This blessing encourages us to be humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. This one encourages us to be passionate about righteousness, to seek after God. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. This encourages us to show mercy to others. And yes, even when they don't show mercy to us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This blessing encourages us to be pure, to be honest. Sometimes, boys and girls, you may be tempted to tell a lie. But remember, there is a blessing for being honest. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. We must be peaceful and have good relationship with others. Don't be that person who is always picking a fight or arguing. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. This encourages us to be tolerant and to be willing to be attacked, taken advantage of, because we stand for truth. But the blessing is there for us in heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things about you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven. For they persecuted the prophets before you in the same way. This encourages us to be patient and to have a positive attitude. Boys and girls, the Beatitudes reminds us about the right attitude we should have. I hope that we try to live each day with kindness and joy. Remember, the Beatitudes shows us the attitude we should have in this life. This is one. 
Look at this word. What does this word remind you of? Um, G-I-N-O-S-E-U-R? Yes. I don't know. Dinosaur? I was thinking the same thing at first. I was wondering if the Bible spoke of dinosaurs, but then I looked again and saw the G. Yep, apparently that is another name for... Genoseret, a place not too far from Galilee. I wonder if dinosaurs roam there. Stay focused. You can always ask your dad when you get into heaven. We're climbing Mount Eremus today. Also called the Mount of Beatitudes. And you will totally love how easy it is to get to the summit. How high is it? About 200 meters above the Sea of Galilee. It is recorded as the one of the lowest summits in the world. Oh, that explains why so many people gathered on the mount to hear Jesus' sermon. Yes, actually that. And the fact that it was so close to the Sea of Galilee, Mount Eremos is known for its very spacious grounds and it is very accommodating to crowds. Right, that makes a lot of sense. I always tried imagining how thousands of people could fit on a mountainside to listen to a sermon, but now I'm seeing the wide ground space and it makes sense. Correct. To make it clearer, in the year 2000, provisions were made for about 100,000 Catholics to gather there to listen to the Pope present a message. The space calculated was able to accommodate that many, but a rainy experience did not allow so many to attend. A hundred thousand? That hill is very spacious. I couldn't help but notice the chapel at the bottom of the hill. It has eight sides. What's that called again? An octagon? Yes, an octagon. That was the Catholic chapel built in 1939. Its eight sides are the reminder of the eight virtues taught in the Beatitudes. Makes complete sense. I heard there's a cloak hanging inside the chapel too. That would be the cloak put there by the Pope in 1964 when he visited the chapel. Pope Paul VI, right? That's right. I think there are also some symbols in the pavement to the front of the chapel. They represent justice, prudence, fortitude, charity, faith, and temperance. That's thoughtful. Those are some great qualities for all of us to exhibit. Yes, and for the boys and girls, when we speak about prudence, we are talking about being careful or cautious. Many times, as boys and girls, we like to rush to do things, but 
being cautious is a very important trait that God wants us to emulate. And charity is love, right? God really wants all of us, boys and girls, to be loving. Sometimes when I look <laughs> at all the evil deeds people do in this world, I get cold thinking that there isn't enough love in this world anymore. That is very true. Mount Eremos is beautiful, isn't it? Look at the view of the Sea of Galilee. Isn't it breathtaking? It sure is. Boys and girls, even though this was not a really high mountain getting to, the stop still required effort. All the mountains are symbols of faith and strength, and both can grow when we climb each step with God. So, so boys, boys and girls, girls breathe, focus, focus, climb, don't, don't stop, move until you reach the top. Thank you for climbing Mount Eremus with us. Bow your heads with me for prayer. Dear Jesus, please help us as your kingdom children to have the right attitude. No matter what happens, help us to always be a beacon for you and to channel all attitudes and behaviors after you. Please be with all the kingdom children as they go through a new week. And bless us and keep us and help us to be able to be here next time on Kingdom Children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, until next time, bye boys and girls. Bye.